dear students now we are going to discuss cdma technique in satellite communication cdma stands for code division multiple access so in this lecture video we are going to discuss the definition of cdma the principle of cdma that is spread spectrum the basic cdma system concept code waveform and its generation the property of the code waveform that is auto correlation property okay so in this lecture video we are going to discuss all these topics in the next video lecture we are going to cover acquisition and tracking of the signal spectrum spreading and despreading cdma throughput and advantages of cdma okay let's start with the introduction of cdma CDMA is a multiple access technique that allows multiple carriers to transmit data signals simultaneously over a common channel here multiple carriers means multiple users okay so multiple users can transmit the data signals simultaneously over a common channel within the bandwidth correct so then how can we separate individual users data at the receiver side so for that each carrier carries a unique code which allows the carrier to be separated from all other carriers at the receiver side so here we have to assign unique code for each users carrier to separate it from all others at the receiver side so in this diagram for the cdma frequency is common time is common but the code is unique for each user okay which allows the carrier to get separated from all others at the receiver side do you all understand this one so next cdma uses the principle of spread spectrum so here spread spectrum means spectrum means the frequency range spreading means spreading the frequency range okay so in general communication the carrier is modulated according to the information that is called as modulation process but in the cdma the carrier is modulated based on the information and then it is further modulated by the code waveform that is very important so there are two modulations one is by the information another one is by the code waveform to spread the spectrum over the available bandwidth so that's why it is called as spread spectrum you all understand this concept hence cdma is also called as ssma what is sss spread spectrum multiple access technique you all understand this one cdma is also called as spread spectrum multiple access okay so here this is the basic diagram of cdma technique at the transmitter side so here p of t is the information signal c of t is the code waveform so both can be given to the multiplier the output of the multiplier is given to the next multiplier which is the balanced modulator this is mainly used to produce the proper uplink frequency signal which is nothing but bpsk signal so here we are using binary phase shift key e signal okay so there are two types of spread spectrum available one is direct sequence spread spectrum this one is frequency hopping spread spectrum okay so these two techniques are used in cdma next waveforms used in cdma cdma can be used with analog and digital signals but nowadays digital signals are widely used in communication systems here p of t is representing the information signal which is a polar non return to zero waveform c of t represents code waveform that is a polar non return to zero waveform non return to zero waveform means here we do not have the value zero okay so it can be either minus v or plus v okay so we do not have any value in the range of zero that is called as non return to zero waveform it can be either negative or positive so here we can consider pseudo random noise sequence clock signal 
So it is used to represent the chip period for this code waveform. Okay. So here we are going to consider only the binary values for code waveform and information signal. So for example, the information signal is represented as 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0 something. So here each value is represented as bit. Correct. So for differentiation, we are going to use the term chips for this code waveform. If you are having the value like this, okay, so here each term is represented as chips, okay. So in binary PN sequence, one element is known as chip that is also known as pulse, okay. The chips in the code vary randomly between plus V and minus V. So here we are using binary phase shift keying modulation method, okay. So the next one is basic CDMA system. So this is the overall CDMA system, transmitter, receiver with the satellite communication. So in this transmitter side, P of T is the information signal, C of T is the code waveform. So both the signals are given to this multiplier, then we can get the product of this two signal as the output, P of T multiplied with C of T. So this product is given to the next multiplier that is nothing but the balanced modulator to get the BPSK signal at this transmitter side. Okay, then the transmitter is going to amplify the signal and process the signal and then given to this transmitting antenna. Here we can get the uplink signal as P of T, U of T, cos omega U T. Here omega U means uplink frequency range. So this is the signal transmitted to the satellite. Okay, uplink signal. So similarly at the receiver side, we have the acquisition and tracking block which is used to generate the carrier signal which is synchronized with the carrier waveform at the transmitter. So then only we can simply ignore the carrier at the receiver side to recover the original signal. Correct. So this block is very important to get the proper output at the receiver side. Okay. So here we have to give whatever the signal is received to this multiplier or we can say the director side. So P of T into cos omega dt. So this acquisition and tracking block is generating the same carrier signal which is synchronized with the transmitting carrier signal. So here C of T, we can get P of T into C squared of T. C squared of T value is always 1. So we can simply eliminate this carrier signal to recover only the information signal at the receiver side. Do you all understand this one? The P of T and C of T signals are given to the multiplier and the output is proportional to the product of these two signals. So this product signal is applied to the next balanced modulator to get the binary phase shift keying output at the carrier frequency. Uplink carrier frequency is represented as E U of T is equal to C of T into P of T cos omega U of T. Okay. So similarly the downlink carrier is E D of T is equal to C of T into P of T cos omega DT. So this is downlink frequency range. Okay. So at the receiver side, the acquisition and tracking block is used to generate the carrier signal which is synchronized with the carrier waveform of the uplink side, that is transmitter side. So here, both the C of T of uplink and the downlink are exactly synchronized, that is C square of T becomes 1 at the receiver side, okay. Then the output from multiplier we can get the answer as C square of T into P of T cos omega dt. Then C square of T is equal to 1. We can recover only the information signal. Then this output is given to the coherent detector to get the original information. Okay. Next we are going to discuss the code signal generation and its characteristics. In the CDMA, we are talking about the code signal, which is unique code waveform for each user. Correct? So it is very important one. The code signal is nothing but a binary code. So each binary symbol is represented as a chip. 
okay this chip generation is controlled by a clock signal so here the chip codes okay so the codes are generated using binary shift registers so here we can consider three state shift registers which is controlled by the clock signal so one more important element here it is xor gate okay so which is mainly used to produce unique code waveform for each user okay so initially we have to set all the inputs are one so inputs are one means we can get the output here as one okay in the next stage this one moves to here and this one moves to here what about this position this one plus this third the output actually it is one right that one is given here so one xr with one the answer is what zero okay so for the second stage here it is zero one one okay in the second stage what is the output this one so we can have the second stage as one then this one is moving here the zero is moving here and what about here this time this is zero and here it is one so one xr with zero its value becomes one now so now one zero one so third output is one correct so next come to this fourth stage so in this one this zero comes here so here it is zero we can take the output as zero okay this one comes here and here we can get one this one is zero one plus zero zero so it is going on like that do you all understand this diagram so finally we can get up to this point that is one 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 zero one zero zero the same sequence is repeated afterwards that means if you are having three stage okay three stage shift register then we can get 2 power 3 minus 1 chips that means seven chips are there in a sequence then the same seven chips are generated again and again periodically so here chip generation is periodic one do you all understand this concept now so here chip rate that is defined as the chips per second so it is represented by the clock speed okay here the code waveform is periodic one so here the chip period is the reciprocal of the clock speed that is represented as tch is equal to 1 by rch where rch is nothing but clock speed okay since the waveform is periodic its periodic time is represented as tn is equal to n into tch here n is the number of chips the generated code waveform can also be represented as maximal sequence or m sequence codes because the maximum length of the sequence is utilized in this code generation so here a code generator with n stage shift register can generate a m sequence of n chips capital n that is equal to 2 power small n minus 1 here small n represents the number of shift registers as i told you three shift registers are used means we can get the maximum number of chips as seven correct so that is the point here so here we are using the pseudo noise code okay so pseudo noise means it is the random signal so here cdma widely uses the concept of randomness okay so pseudo noise codes means binary ones and zeros are randomly distributed with certain deterministic features that is very important we cannot simply randomly distribute it but it should have some certain deterministic features in it that is very important point here okay here the number of ones can be obtained by using the formula 2 power n by 2 number of zeros is equal to 2 power n by 2 minus 1 the total number of m sequences in a periodic signal can be obtained as s max is equal to phi of n by small n so here phi is nothing but the euless function okay so the next one is autocorrelation property of this code waveform 
so this is very important property of the code signal okay so auto correlation correlation means what the similarity auto correlation means what the similarity between a time shifted version of a signal and the unshifted version of the signal do you all understand this one so it is the comparison between the original signal and its delayed signal that is the meaning of this okay so by shifting the signal and then compare the similarities between the undelayed signal and the delayed signal so for that we can use this diagram so here we are going to give the original signal to this multiplier and the time delayed signal as an another input to this multiplier then we can get the correlated output and that can be averaged by using this integrator so actually its output between the range of maximum value 1 to minus 1 by n so this is the correlation output for this code waveform okay code waveform c of t is multiplied with its delayed version c of t minus tau the output is averaged by the integrator which makes the signal as independent of time. If dev is equal to 0, then the output is maximum. This one is very important, that is, autocorrelation function decreases linearly from the maximum value to minus 1 by n in code waveform.